And you can see Sam Lowe's here just coming through. It looked like Sam was out there on the... There was a red sticker on that rear tyre, so he's out there on the X tyre now, the softer tyre. I think he had been out on the, on the harder tyre for his longer run, so he's now just getting his time attack in just to be able to get that bit of confidence with the softer tyre. 141.701, his fastest time of the day so far, just under eight tenths of a second shy of Nicolo Bulliger, who's making his way back out onto track for the uh, final, final minutes of this session. Alvaro Bautista still out there, still lapping very strongly in uh, Sector 1 in particular, uh, but uh, the pace has dropped off somewhat at this stage of the session. Um, so it's uh, Bulliger and Bautista, potentially uh, we're looking at a, a gloves-off uh, fight between the Aruba IT Ducati riders. And, Yes, when Nicolo Bulliger was signed, it was with the intention of him being positioned to take over from Bautista when Bautista eventually retired. It could well be that Nicolo Bulliger retires Bautista over the course of this season. Uh, a lot of the time, riders and athletes, they get retired rather than make the decisions, and Bulliger is showing that he's got that speed, but it's one thing to do it in the early rounds, it's another thing to build your championship season. You can't even know what they've got with Alvaro Bautista. But the injuries at the end of last year, they can be a big factor. If you think back to this time last year or when we came to Catalonia for the Catalan round, there was that extraordinary press conference Ducati called and it was for a one-year extension for Alvaro Bautista. The talk at the time was it could have been a retirement announcement and then the one-year deal was almost seen as, well, it seems that Alvaro wants to do a farewell tour. That's a rumour that's never really gone away for the last 12 months. So for Alvaro Bautista, the injuries and uh, let's, at the end of the day, the success he's had the last two years, it means he can sign off at the end of his career and have no regrets at any stage. But uh, for Alvaro, he won't want to go out where his teammates being able to outperform him. And uh, it's still only free practice. We'll see where they stack up in the races tomorrow. But uh, for Alvaro Bautista, he knows he's got a quick teammate beside him. Yes, uh, Bautista second fastest in this free practice to this afternoon as Andrea Iannone gets bottled up behind Tito Rabat through this uh, final sector of uh, his latest lap. Iannone sitting in sixth position in FP2. Uh, just a quick run through the riders who have improved this afternoon. Bulliger, Bautista, Petrucci, Sam Lowe's, Axel Bassani, Michael Rubin Rinaldi, Alex Lowe's, Ika Lekwona and uh, Adam Norodin uh, among the, the Hondas able to improve this afternoon. But Honda in FP2, 15th and 16th position for the factory riders at uh, what is their home round, of course, with the, uh, the Catalonia being the base for Team HRC. Yeah, and uh, for Team HRC, this is a big weekend. This is a place where they've always been one of their stronger tracks and uh, to be 15th and 16th fastest just isn't where they need to be and uh, when you look at BMW up there top five for top rack and uh, Vandermark with his longer pace as well setting times that are, are faster than Honda it does just show the challenge facing Honda this weekend and going forward but we did hear from their team manager in free practice one and they're doing their best not to get bogged down by any specific event they're trying to just make sure they can make their progress big changes to that bike for this year and that means that you then have to try and learn and evolve with it an awful lot of laps again set by Andrea Locatelli this afternoon. He ran 20 uh, this morning. He's uh, put in 22, according to our counter, uh, this afternoon. So just over a, a minute remaining. Obviously, he's back in his pit box now. Uh, teammate uh, Jonathan Ray is still circulating out there. It's going to have been uh, plenty of laps on the board for him as well. In fact, I think he's going to be the rider with most laps uh, by the time we get to the chequered flag in a minute's time. Yeah, it was a, a full race distance for Locatelli. And uh, we saw Ray obviously went out at the start of the session, came into the pit box, and then he went back out again. So for Ray, we'll probably see something similar from him compared to what we saw from Locatelli as well. And it's important for teams to be able to have that comparison. We heard from Kiko about the development tyres. Pirelli have new tyres for this weekend. So you need to make sure whether or not that new rear tyre helps you a little bit more compared to the old one or if the changes to the front tyre are having the desired effect as well. The one thing we can take from this free practice session, obviously some of the times you take with a, a pinch of salt, but you can't take anything away from Ducati. Five bikes inside the top six, that's ominous for this weekend. And particularly the consistency of the pace of Bulliger in particular, but uh, Bautista as well. He's uh, tucked up behind traffic here as he makes his way through the final turn. Just about to go checkered on this one. So uh, Alvaro Bautista exits the final turn and the checkered flag now falls. So uh, Bautista completing 1 minute 42.253 there as the checkered flag. Just for Petrucci as well, he's, I think, a dozen laps into his stint. And uh, obviously the third fastest time was impressive from him. 
but it's about trying to gain that information from him after losing out in the running at the start of the session as well. So for all of these riders, they're all working towards the same thing, which is tomorrow's races and uh, just trying to figure out how you can put yourself into that ballpark. You can see Alex Lowe's right on board with Danny towards Turn 1, just behind his teammate Axel Bassani as well. So a decent showing from Bassani there, ninth and 10th for the two Kawasaki riders. A little bit further down the timesheets than they'd like, but good to see Bassani making that step compared to in Phillip Island. But I think for this weekend, for Lowe's, regardless of if you're the championship leader, you have to be realistic of what the goal is. Kawasaki are going to be up against it this weekend. Put points on the board, and if that means uh, fifth places, then it's fifth places. Uh, but over the course of a season, if the bike is competitive enough at other circuits, that's where you'll make your ground. It's one of those ones where if Lowe's and Kawasaki can come away with top sevens, three top sevens would actually be a really good weekend when you look at how competitive it's going to be at the front of the field. They'll need to manage their tyres in the longer race and just try and give themselves that consistency and that, that's where they can maybe make up ground in the closing stages but uh, certainly over single lap you'd expect to see a few other bikes in front of them. Some heart in that regard from the fact that Alex Lowe still had tyres at the end of the weekend in Phillip Island to be able to go around Bautista. Don't often see uh, Bautista beaten for tyre life. Yeah I think so obviously the high grip track in Phillip Island was quite abrasive and that played into things but for Lowe's we know he can manage that tyre well he's, that's what he's focused on all the way through the winter but we also know more importantly he's one of the better riders on the Q tyre as well we tend to see he, he makes a big step forward whenever you put that qualifying tyre on during the Super Bowl session and that will be important for him because he'll know that if he's to have a chance this weekend he has to qualify well tomorrow